Hello friends, welcome to this discussion on product portfolio management and product category management. And you see a very important thing which is getting initiated from this discussion is which we started carrying from the initial most part of our course that is you know we started building everything to reach to the management side of the product managing products and brands of course but as of now we are focusing on product side so you see we are reaching towards that and at this juncture we would be focusing upon portfolio category and then analysis in terms of competition and several other elements but let's talk of portfolio here it's a very engrossing subject it's a wonderful subject because it requires lots of imagination it requires lots of integration in your thought process it requires a perspective around when you imagine that a company is having 100 products for example how would they be managing those products definitely there are so many people to do that but again how they would be building up a coherence between all those products you see you visit an apple showroom for example look around you beautiful desktops beautiful laptops tabs pods pads phones everything and then look at the composite relationship between these products and suddenly you start realizing that you know you can look at them with the perspective of being a family also you can look at them with the perspective of being a line also you can look at them with the perspective of category also and then classification is always there supporting you and largely it's a big portfolio it's 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 having almost everything within that now if you just imagine that situation with the perspective of person who is standing as the manager of that retail showroom for whom every product is a baby and he owns the prosperity of that baby along with the customer satisfaction would he be differentiating those products would he be segregating you know his attention from those products no he would be thinking about those products in an integrated kind of a fashion and once a customer is focusing on purchasing a mobile phone say so he would definitely be looking forward to introducing some other product to the same customer as well now expand your thinking in terms of a product manager who is actually sitting you know somewhere for this little while try and imagine that there is one person who is looking after the product you know uh, product management of all the products from the company side although there are so many that is for sure but but just imagine see i intend to take your attention towards a situation where in this person on the floor at the level of the organization is looking at all with a universal perspective is it simple is it easy is it feasible let's have a look at it and let's see where it leads us you see product portfolio management and mark this definitional framework source is you know given at the base of the slide it has been taken from baker and hart 2007 product strategy and management uh published by prentice hall now you see product portfolio management is a definitive process of analyzing and assessing each product that is why i gave you a scenario 
analyzing and assessing each product and its current level of success. Many a times when there is an apparent success that is product is doing good, product manager might feel comfortable with this thought that the product is successful, but success must be seen with reference to the potential success of the product and I will be talking about this word potential later on as well. I have referred to that in my preceding sessions as well. It also involves identifying risks in terms of competition, customer rejection, some other kind of risk you know from all the sides and, and I have re already referred to you about you know Michael Porter's five forces model you may refer to that. So, it involves identifying risks and future opportunities, streamlining resource allocation based on product success and priority and ultimately aligning these products with the business's long term strategic goals. Now, you see when I would be referring to product strategies later on this would be a very important input for you to remember that or to decipher that should I say. So, till then remember this and mark these aspects especially in terms of identification of risks, future opportunities, current level of success, specifically, especially in terms of potential. It enables product managers and I am talking of product portfolio management. It enables product managers and stakeholders to constantly review their products, improve them based on evolving consumer demands. Under strategies later on I would be referring to line stretching. And this is what you have to remember when we would be talking about that later on. You see evolving consumer demands add more products or services and streamline the product execution based on resource capacity. Capacity in terms of design, capacity in terms of innovation, capacity in terms of you know. Uh, production capacity in terms of human resource, capacity in terms of uh, financial liquidity, capacity in terms of the industrial life cycle stage. I should not be introducing this term randomly, but you see where when we talk of product life cycle, we must think in terms of the stage of the overall industry as such also, where the product belongs. So, you see but if it, if it is in consonance with how industry is going and product is doing slightly better than that, that, that is much a comfortable kind of a situation although you know there are so many ways to think about it. But you see we have to see that how uh, we are doing relatively. And, and uh, in my section on strategy or strategies, I would be referring to innovation and design and those kind of things and subsequently I would be talking about design thinking. So, you see all this would be carried forward as a composite discussion then. These processes, but before that I should be repeating this you know these three sentences so as to develop a coherence in whatever I am saying. You see I uh, you know as I was saying it enables product managers that is product portfolio management enables product managers and stakeholders to constantly review their products, improve them based on the evolving consumer demands, add more products or services and streamline the product execution based on resource capacity. These processes cumulatively result in an increased return on investment thereby enhancing the businesses top line. Now, this will be very useful when we will be talking about brand value chain later on and there you know concentration on market investment, marketing investment would be a key ingredient for a brand to develop in due course of time. 
You see, return on investments in terms of product is related to producing it and then taking it to the market and getting the acceptance around it. It involves almost all the sorts of costs you may put in for developing for for developing this, uh, that you know that chain. So, this is the larger frame of our subsequent discussion on product portfolio management. Just be with me. You see, there are some examples of successful product portfolio management. Apple's expansion of its portfolio to include the iPod has not only launched a whole economy of i add-ons including the iPhone, but also boosted sales of Apple's existing computers. Now, this example is referring to the creation of a portfolio on the basis of the success of one product, wherein while that product became successful, that brand started resonating got established, we could utilize that resonance for not only developing the particular line through and through and we created depth also, but also we created different lines generating a width around that particular product. Just go to their website, look at their line and width and product mix at large and you would realize what I am mentioning, especially when, when you would go to their you know section on when they describe the history of their products and you would realize that how they suggest on when they came up with which, which kind of a product and how it was well accepted then how it traversed to you know uh, different types of customers and when and why they came up with different kinds of you know line variants as well as width variants variants now another wonderful example is the indian network star tv star tv is a definitely multinational company but you know it saw its prime time i'm talking of their uh, you know indian uh, uh, organization so it saw its prime time viewer share increase from less than 5% source is mentioned so uh, we have taken it from a specific source so their viewer share increased from less than 5% mark this to more than 80% thanks to the concept the producers and especially Mr. Bachchan when in one year after a single hit show Kaun Banega Karurpati the Indian version of who wants to be a millionaire helped all its productions become more popular. They gained a viewership and they utilize that viewership that interaction of viewership or should I say the attention of the viewership for promoting several of their shows and then it traversed all through. It definitely wrote a very specific kind of uh, history in terms of Indian television because that show definitely got lots of undivided attention and it also enabled so many marketers to uh, you know advertise and know in real time that how many viewers are actually watching their advertisements and their message. So, you see that that uh, show particularly gave advantage to so many stakeholders in due course of time. And here when I am talking of product portfolio management and expansion or establishment of different lines because of the because of one of the successful products. Here you see I, I should suggest one more thing very important which is that you see 
a time comes which seems to be right for one of the products to glow. Now, if you will look at it with a scientific perspective through retrospective analysis in terms of a very, very successful product which led the complete portfolio later on, you would realize that it can easily be said that time came for that product, but we must acknowledge that that was a wonderful product management. Lots of good strategies got infused in that product management. The product managers did their job well. There was lots of scientific analysis, research, right positioning, right communication, promotion or let us say right mix of product price place promotion and you know everything right in terms of all those things which we have discussed were done or are being done in times or in, in terms of the products which are doing exceptionally well these days. For example, one of my favorites which, which I would definitely be mentioning uh, you know in a short while but, but uh, I cannot refrain myself from mentioning the name. One of my favorites is Desire, a car wherein the product managers did almost everything right in terms of that car. That was the right time in terms of putting up you know a small car into a larger slightly larger required shape with a good engine and uh, you know with good engine capacity with good pickup, good speed, good pricing, good positioning and rest is history. Desire is one of the largest selling vehicles as far as Indian aut automotive scenario goes. You see that is what I am mentioning about and then Maruti 800 has ruled Indian market, I, I should say ruled Indian market for a very, very long time. It was a product which somehow became part of India's life. Today also so many Maruti 800 can be seen on road and, and are being resold many a times and people are enjoying that. And believe me an excellent low maintenance product which could have gone smoothly on plains and in hills and everywhere. So you see that is that is what I am talking about when, when everything goes right. There was a scooter called Bajaj Chetak for example. Believe me, people who have used that, I still have few friends who are using that old version of the scooter because they are so satisfied, they are trying to maintain that and there was lots of local support given to these kind of vehicles because by the time this these products they get expanded, the portfolio gets expand, uh, the core product you know gets support from all the sides not only through the company venues that is company service stations, but so many independent entrepreneurs who have been trained by the organization, they become you know the service setups or service support for these kind of vehicles. There was an excellent motorcycle by escorts called Rajdoot for example, just historically look into it and you would realize you know what uh, I am mentioning in terms of one product expanding the portfolio altogether. You see the benefits can even extend to other firms. The benefits can even extend to other firms when we talk of you know uh, let us say the benefits of one product in terms of portfolio and it, it, these are unique examples but uh, they exist. For example, author Dan Brown had written three books, a very famous author as you all know with optimal sales prior to his bestseller The Da Vinci Code. I think there is a movie on this book as well and, uh, and if I am not wrong one of my favorite actors Tom Hanks is there in that movie. Mr. Hanks is, is a wonderful actor. So now you see when his former publishers then re-released the older works they became bestsellers as well. So former publishers they took you know this opportunity to not only benefit the author's reputation but to propel their own you know uh, uh, publication as well and not to mention that the publication house definitely would have got advantage in different kinds of terms. 
for example, a very reputable publication, uh, you know, uh, which uh, Bloomsbury, which published, uh, you know, uh, Harry Potter got several advantages when Harry Potter became successful. So, you see that, uh, that uh, the message here is that reputation, the success traverses in several forms in several ways at large. Hero Motors has several, you know, they have several models wherein I remember one of their initial most models when they were with Honda, so Hero Honda CD100. It became extremely successful and then came a motorbike which was a resultant in terms of you know line development and I would be talking about line stretching and those kind of things later on. But line development and that model became one of the largest selling probably at a global level. Uh, definitely that was uh, I think confined to Indian market, but so much of sales you know that comparative sales was very large in global reference also Splendor. So, one of the largest selling bikes and then they came up with several kinds of models you know and, and uh, many of them did very very well writing history in terms of their sales. There was uh, you know a, uh, a motorbike called Yamaha RX100 by Escorts in collaboration with Yamaha. It was a Yamaha successful uh, you know uh, bike and a wonderfully accepted bike all through. So, when Yamaha RX100 became successful then Yamaha 350 came in it became very successful and several other versions of Yamaha became successful and so on. So, you see and it is not necessary that this works the same way many times a one of the models is so accepted, so deeply accepted that the other variants do not do well and the portfolio resists as far as the expansion goes. So, and, and just watch the subsequent videos on you know uh, line stretching and line development and you know strategic perspective and you would realize where, where I would be talking about this that how uh, you know uh, this might not also work. So, and, and uh, then one of my favorite examples in terms of a media house. Times of India does well and they have several other lines in terms of and, and uh, you know uh, I would have mentioned earlier and I would be mentioning in due course of time uh, because newspaper business or let us say news content business information in terms of news is a complex business. You do not earn largely from the viewers or the listeners or the readers, you earn from the advertisers. And the advertiser's confidence depends upon the credibility of your news and the readership or the viewership and so on. But when you are confident of the content and it is well accepted by one customer, you may multiply the customer through other venues. For example, a newspaper may have a television or other you know forms of news release or you know media options. And, and you know for example, Times of India they have they are into FM now you know Radio Mirchi doing very well. So, the point is and Times of India is one of the largest circulated newspapers in the world as Danny Jagran is one of the largest read newspapers in the world. So, you see the point is and India boasts of so many good products altogether. you know we are proud Indians. So, but again the point is that this complex business definitely gets advantage when you look at the content at the core and the content traversing in terms of you know whole uh, spectrum of as far as product portfolios go. Can we do this for academic programs? Is it possible that we can do this for academic programs? For example, uh, you know a predominantly technological institution can we have the same brand uh, persona equity traversing into their management program? 
I think we can do that if we work upon scientifically on product and brand management and then develop it all along. Goals and objectives of product portfolio management. Align the products both present and pipelined with the organization's mission and vision. I may talk of mission and vision later on when I would be referring to brand but as of now just keep in mind that mission refers to slightly a longer stre uh, you know stretch in terms of you know pathway where organization desires to go and vision thinks of you know vision is related to a very very long uh, you know stretch of time wherein organization focuses on carrying along all the stakeholders with a perspective of their prosperity, a visionary perspective related to the benefit of the stakeholders and prosperity at large. Then second element in terms of goals and objectives is related to that one should assess and analyze the place of products in the market and their impact on the internal business environment. Inwards, how it will develop our capability so that we can think of integration or diversification. I would be talking about uh, diversification in my strategic section. Eliminate the low prof profitable and the ones not adding value from the portfolio. It is a tough decision. Products are like babies. Product managers, they get emotionally associated with the products and it is very natural. You have given your, you know, uh, uh, time to this product, you, you have thought about this, you, you own this basically, you have worried about the product. So, how would you exit this product, you know, just, just putting it in some, some uh, you know, cabinet to see it for uh, a long time. So, so, your desire is to bring up a product like Borolin which goes on and on and on basically. So, assign and schedule resources to profit yielding and novel innovative products to help them upskill and perform better. This must be seen objectively with the perspective of potential of a product. You see, in last two sessions I have used this word four times because potential analysis is not a simple thing and it is not forecasting. Potential analysis is like when you look at a young kid and you feel that she would become you know a scientist who would actually contribute at large in the development of so many things. Now, that is what potential analysis is. Potential analysis is that this team which is there would develop Mangalyan and would take it to the you know uh, uh, levels of reaching Mars and India successfully did that, a wonderful example of potential. And now we have a very famous movie on you know Mangalyan, so just watch it and you would realize what potential and potential analysis means. You know lots of elements of potential analysis are exemplified there. Another goal and objective perspective is related to review and focus or should I say reviewing and focusing on improving the products or services performance to keep them in line with the ongoing demands. Continuously assessing that what else the customer would require and continuously fulfilling that, keeping yourself at the hem of the affairs. Did I mention uh, discipline somewhere? I did that in one of my sessions and I would be talking about that in strategic element also wherein you see keeping at the, keeping yourself at the hem of the affairs is uh, specifically related to a disciplined way of leading product portfolio management and that can be you know percolated down to an individual's discipline create a transparent work environment and keep every stakeholder and decision maker in the loop now, this is one of the most important elements and the last one from my side in this session. You see, keeping the objectives clear or 
specifying the vision, your vision as a product manager and the objectives with clarity in front of your stakeholders, all your stakeholders and motivating them for accepting those with the same zeal and enthusiasm, you know, is one of the most important aspects of product portfolio management. I take you back to the scene uh, from where I started this discussion. Imagine a showroom of one organization with several products. If all the stakeholders are not in consonance with each, each other with the same intensity, they would either be oversighting one of the products or would be, might be, you know, undermining the potential of one of the products. But what we should do is, we should keep up everything towards growth. That is what product portfolio management is. Keep thinking, keep discussing, keep wondering and I will be joining you next time. Till then, goodbye.